In a previous video, we had a look at the actor action model and how it could help decouple states from each other. Today, we are taking this a step further by building on top of the last video. So, if you have not seen it yet, I recommend you go watch it now and come back to this video afterwards. The idea is very simple but quite powerful. Rather than have all actions acting at the same time, we put them onto a stack and only let the topmost action work. We can then push and pop actions on and off the stack knowing that only the topmost action will run. This allows us to reduce the dependencies between actions tremendously, meaning not all actions need to be aware of each other. This is a technique I have found very successful when dealing with turn-based systems or games with enough content that having each system be aware of each other becomes unmaintainable. Let's have a look at a simple example. We have a player that can move around the screen, and we have a pulse screen that temporarily stops the player from moving. Traditionally, the player would have to continually check if the game is paused or not in order to move around. Additionally, the pulse system will have to keep track of what was happening when we paused the game in order to correctly resume it later on. This means the pulse system needs to be aware of how different objects work, and each object needs to be aware of the pulse system. This can start producing long and complex code, leading to bugs. Using the stacked action system, this is much cleaner. We can introduce a new paused action and push it onto all actors when the game is paused. This stops the current action from running as it's no longer the topmost action. When resuming the game, we simply pop the paused action of the stack, allowing the previous action to run. The pulse system does not need to know how each object functions, and none of the actions need to check if the game is paused either. Notice that the moving action could be any number of actions, even multiple actions are already on the stack. This system will work for any actor every time. Of course, this can be useful in other scenarios too. Let's open Game Maker and see how this could work to create some Pokemon style movement. Let's define the actor object. In the create event, we simply create the action stack. This stack will hold our action instances. Whenever we create a data structure, we need to free it. This is best done in the cleanup event. We start by destroying any actions left within the stack before destroying the stack itself. To push and pop actions onto the stack, we will create two scripts, starting with the push action. This script will take an actor and an action as an argument. To stop our previous actions from running, we will deactivate them. So we'll get the topmost item from the stack, and if it is a valid instance, we deactivate it using instance deactivate object. We could then push our new action onto the stack and set the actor variable to the action instance. The script will now deactivate whatever action is on top and push our new action onto the stack ready to be run. The other operation we need is pop action to remove and destroy the topmost action and activate the next one. We first pop an action off the stack and again check if it is a valid instance before destroying it. The next step is to activate the new topmost action. So we check the topmost value and if it is valid, we activate it. This time we do not use instance exists as GameMaker does not consider deactivated instances to exist. These two scripts, along with the actor objects, is all we need to start defining our players and actions. So let's get started with that. We start with the player object with a simple sprite and inheriting from the actor object. We can now create the moving action. I have taken the habit to prefix my action objects with an A rather than an O. In the create event, we will define a few basic variables. And we can define the logic in the step event. Here we will first update the time and calculate our parametric T variable, making sure to clamp it to 1 in order to not overstep. We can then linearly interpolate between the from and to values to calculate our player's new position. When t reaches 1, it means we reach the end of the action's lifetime, and it should be removed from the stack and destroyed. This is of course done using our pop action script. Now we need a way to put those movement actions onto the stack. We'll do that with another action named idle. This action will not do anything but listen for key presses. In the key right event, we will create our movement action object and set it up to move the player to the right by 64 pixels. In order to commit that action to the stack, we of course use the push action script. The code is essentially the same for the up, left and down keys. All that's left to do is create the idle instance in the player create event before pushing it onto the stack. 
remember to call event inherited so that the actor object create event is carried over. Running the game now, we see that our object will start moving if we press one of the arrow keys, but only when the player has stopped moving. Every time the player finishes one of its movement cycles, the movement action is popped off the stack, allowing the idle action to run. What is especially interesting here is that the move action has no idea about what needs to be executed next. This means that you can stack multiple movement actions together and they'll be carried out in sequence, allowing you to build much more complex behaviors without making the movement action any more complicated. So this wraps it up for this video on the stacked action system. I hope you find it useful or at least interesting. Uh, if you have, please give this video a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.